on World News Tonight. Escalating attacks, deadly bombardment of the Ukraine city strikes most civilian areas. People run for safety as bombs fall and entire neighborhoods in some regions of Ukraine are now destroyed. Desperate to escape, just like everyone else, orphans, toddlers and teenagers flee Ukraine hoping to find shelter in Poland. What happens then? Find out tonight. Race to aid. Nations join hands in efforts to help out Ukraine as major firms pull out from Russia and the United States vows to stop buying Russian oil in the latest row. More details on this tonight. And colorful celebrations. Disneyland comes alive with color and performances as they celebrate a new milestone. This is Other Than Anna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We begin tonight's broadcast with some grim updates on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The fighting intensifies in key cities of Ukraine. Ukrainians are blaming Russia for breaking a temporary ceasefire and more civilian casualties were reported in and out around from Kyiv. A senior U.S. official says that Russia has now committed 95% of its pre-invasion force to the fight for Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Sunday said his campaign in Ukraine was going according to plan and would not end until Kiev stopped fighting. His remarks were made in a phone call with Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan, who appealed for a ceasefire in the conflict, as did French President Emmanuel Macron, who held a nearly two-hour phone call with Putin on Sunday. Nearly 1.5 million people have fled in what the UN calls the fastest growing refugee crisis in Europe since World War II. Efforts to evacuate some of the 400,000 residents from the heavily bombarded city of Mariupol failed for a second day on Sunday. The Ukrainian coastal city has endured days of shelling, trapping people without heat, power and water. Kiev has renewed its appeal to the West to toughen sanctions, and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky asked again on Sunday for a no-fly zone to be introduced for all Russian rockets. If you don't do it, if you do not provide us with at least planes so that we can defend ourselves, then there is only one conclusion to make. You also want us to be killed very slowly. He added that Russia was preparing to bombard another southern city, Odessa. Washington and its NATO allies have resisted Ukraine's appeals for a no-fly zone for fear that it would escalate the conflict beyond Ukraine's borders. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Sunday said that the U.S. had seen very credible reports of deliberate attacks on civilians and that Washington was documenting these reports to support potential war crimes investigations. Russia denies attacking civilian areas. The West has ratcheted up sanctions and scaled up efforts to rearm Ukraine, sending in items ranging from Stinger missiles to anti-tank weapons. Just like the land, economy and people are affected by the brutal invasion, one category has been drastically affected. Hundreds of children, from toddlers to teenagers, fled Ukrainian orphanages and crossed into Poland, where they are being housed in makeshift dormitories. They are among the youngest forced to flee in what the United Nations calls the worst humanitarian crisis in Europe since World War II. More than 200 children evacuated an orphanage in southeastern Ukraine over the weekend as Russian troops attacked a nearby nuclear power plant. The children, ranging from toddlers to teenagers, arrived in the western city of Lviv after a 24-hour train ride with orphanage staffers, including a very emotional director. As night fell and the temperature plunged, the children waited patiently on the platform at Lviv, none of them crying or complaining. As snow began to fall, they boarded buses bound for their new home in neighboring Poland, where dozens of other orphans from Kyiv, Odessa and Kharkiv are already being housed in places such as the Osa Hotel in Warsaw, which has been repurposed for refugees. Conference rooms were turned into makeshift dormitories for around 700 children who can stay as long as they need help, a hotel executive said. 
One woman overseeing the children said she was being barraged with questions from them about when the situation will end, adding, quote, They are afraid and we are afraid. We don't have any answers for them. We don't know what will happen tomorrow, what will happen in an hour. As of Sunday, the civilian death toll since Moscow launched its invasion of Ukraine on February 24th stood at 364, including more than 20 children, according to the United Nations, with hundreds more injured. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky has been desperately pleading with the United States and Europe to produce more fighter planes and to stop buying Russian oil. Tonight, the U.S. and Poland on a new course to help Ukraine defend its skies. A plan that could give Zelensky's forces the kind of Russian-made fighter planes they are trained to fly from Poland's military. And the U.S. would pledge to replace them. We're talking very actively about this, looking at what we could do to backfill Poland if it chooses to send um, the MiGs and the Sioux planes that it has uh, to Ukraine. But buying replacement jets takes time. And the U.S. says Poland cannot be left vulnerable by giving up any of its defenses. Still, lawmakers say Zelensky's request for aircraft is compelling. We don't need you to fly our planes or fly your planes into our war zone. Mm -hmm. We need the planes that we can fly ourselves. From aiding Ukraine to cutting off Putin's oil sales. Oh Today, the God. clearest That's sign good. that the U.S. position is changing. We are now in, uh, in very active discussions with our European partners uh, about banning the, uh, the import of Russian oil uh, to our countries, while, of course, at the same time, maintaining a steady uh, global supply of, uh, of oil. The White House is wary of any step that would trigger a further spike in gas prices. But political pressure from both parties is growing. I think there's very strong bipartisan support to cut off uh, Russian oil and gas sales to the United States. We should not allow Vladimir Putin to have the power at any moment to raise gas prices on Americans by cutting us off at some point now or in the future. So we should cut him off now and replace it with American oil. Ukraine's President Zelensky warns that Russian forces are preparing to bombard Odessa, the historic port city in the Black Sea coast. With that announcement, citizens are preparing for the worst. Residents pile up sandbags and make Molotov cocktails as they prepare to defend their home. Ukrainian officials are becoming more and more certain that the southern city of Odessa could be Russia's next target. By capturing the port city, the Russians could seek to deprive Ukrainians of any access to waters, having already lost control over most of their country's Azov coast. There is no fighting in Odessa today, but there are Russian military ships nearby in the Black Sea. We assume that the enemy is preparing. That's what we think. The enemy is preparing a landing operation on our city. The attack could come from the Black Sea, but also via land from the nearby city of Kherson or from the sky. The Russians are preparing to bomb Odessa. Odessa. Russians have always come to Odessa and received a warm welcome. And now what? Bombs falling on Odessa, artillery against Odessa, missiles fired at Odessa. It will be a war crime. It will be a historical crime. Odessa's mayor is calling for a no-fly zone to protect the almost one million residents living in the city. NATO says that option is off the table. Many civilians around the globe are joining hands in support of Ukraine by proceeding with mass demonstrations. In Russia alone, nearly 5,000 protesters were detained as they protested against Vladimir Putin. Police detained more than 4,300 people across Russia on Sunday at protests against President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. That's according to an independent protest monitoring group, which said it had documented the detention of at least 4,366 people in 56 different cities across the country. 
dozens of protesters in Yekaterinburg being detained on Sunday, and one protester there was shown being beaten with a baton and kicked on the ground by police in riot gear. The video showed numerous protesters, some elderly, being escorted onto buses by security forces. Russia's interior ministry said earlier that police had detained around 3,500 people, including 1,700 in Moscow, 750 in St. Petersburg, and 1,061 in other cities. The Interior Ministry also said 5,200 people had taken part in the protests. Some Russian state-controlled media carried short reports about Sunday's protests, but they did not feature high in news bulletins. The last Russian protests with a similar number of arrests were in January of last year, when thousands demanded the release of opposition leader Alexei Navalny after he was arrested upon returning from Germany, where he had been recovering from being poisoned with a nerve agent. Navalny had called for anti-war protests on Sunday across Russia and the rest of the world. Protesters gathered at Parliament Square in London on Sunday and outside the White House in Washington, D.C., as well as in Mexico City, New Delhi, Istanbul, Budapest, Belgrade, and Brussels. And residents of some Ukrainian towns and cities occupied by Russian forces also took to the streets in protest. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Russia has been accused of trying to take the Iran nuclear deal hostage as part of its wider battle with the West over Ukraine after it threw a last-minute spanner into plans of an agreement to lift a swathe of U uh, United States economic sanctions on Tehran. The crisis in Ukraine is now imperiling another fraught international effort, the Iran nuclear deal. Shortly after Tehran said it agreed to a roadmap with the UN nuclear watchdog to resolve outstanding issues which could help revive the 2015 nuclear deal, a new wrinkle from Russia. Russia is demanding written U.S. guarantees that sanctions on Moscow over its invasion into Ukraine would not damage Russian cooperation with Iran. One senior Iranian official told us on Saturday that Russia's move was, quote, not constructive for talks between Tehran and global powers. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said limitations due to new sanctions had become a stumbling block for the Iran nuclear deal, warning the West that Russian national interests would have to be taken into account. Two diplomats, one of them not directly involved in the talks, said China has also demanded written guarantees that its companies doing business in Iran wouldn't be affected by U.S. sanctions. On Friday, the parties involved in Vienna talks said they were close to reaching an agreement. But demands from Russia and China may complicate efforts to seal a nuclear deal at a time when an agreement looked likely. Since 2019, Tehran has breached the deal's nuclear limits and gone well beyond, rebuilding stockpiles of enriched uranium, refining it to higher fissile purity, and installing advanced centrifuges to speed up output. Iran denies that it has ever sought to acquire nuclear weapons. In the last 10 days, so much has changed. Europe's security has been shaken. Western leadership seems to have found an energy, a way of coming together that has been lacking in recent years. Night after night, the world watches as the Ukrainian people spoil and slow down Vladimir Putin's plans of drawing new lines on the map. With that statement, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson says world leaders might mount a renewed effort to ensure Russia's horrific invasion of Ukraine fails. Let's cross over to other than the world is Russia correspondent Dilini Senviratta, who joins us now from London in the United Kingdom for more. Dilini. Yes, Shanali. PM Johnson set out a six-point plan, including rapidly strengthening defences in NATO countries. But Labour criticised the PM for not acting more quickly over sanctions. Out of a series of meetings with international leaders, the Prime Minister said Putin must fail and must be seen to fail in this act of aggression. The invasion was condemned by 141 nations at the UN General Assembly this week, while 39 countries, coordinated by the UK, made the largest ever referral for war crimes to the International Criminal Court. But Boris Johnson is set out to call war leaders to make a renowned and concerted effort to stop Russian President Vladimir Putin. In his six-point plan to maintain pressure on Mr Putin, the Prime Minister said, world well, leaders should mobilize an international humanitarian coalition for Ukraine. 
they should also support Ukraine in its efforts to provide for its own self-defense, economic pressure on Russia should be ratcheted up. The Prime Minister is also expected to deliver his message at meetings with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte at Downing Street. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was Adder in a World News Special Correspondent Dilini Semi Ratna reporting from London in the United Kingdom. The Russian economy is heading into a deep recession. The ruble tumbled in value and Russians are being cut off from even basic financial transactions like credit cards. But U.S. Secretary of State Antony Binken also warned that Putin is doubling down and Americans should be prepared for this war to go on for a while. U.S. payments firms Visa Inc. and Muscat Inc. said that they were suspending operations in Russia over the invasion of Ukraine and that they would work with clients and partners to seize all transactions there. Two card payment giants that will no longer be operating in Russia. Visa and MasterCard cards issued in Russia won't work outside the country and those issued abroad won't work in Russia. Noting the unprecedented nature of the current conflict and the uncertain economic environment, we have decided to suspend our network services in Russia. We are compelled to act following Russia's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine and the unacceptable events that we have witnessed. Major corporations across a range of industries have stopped doing business in Russia since the invasion of Ukraine. Online payment platform PayPal is also temporarily halting its operations there, another measure which could have a strong impact on the population. Russia's main banks have downplayed the impact of the cards being suspended. They say the cards will still work in the country until their expiration date. The Russian economy is being hit hard by sanctions and much of the damage is being felt by ordinary Russians. The value of the ruble has fallen in recent days. Not only the Visa and MasterCard Inc.'s Netflix top accounting firms KPMG and PwC as well as American Express cuts ties with Russia as that country's conflict with Ukraine escalates. Streaming service Netflix said on Sunday it was pulling out of Russia as conflict in Ukraine continued to escalate. Earlier this month, Netflix said it would temporarily halt all future projects in Russia as it assessed the impact of Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. But over the weekend, Russian President Vladimir Putin vowed to press ahead with his offensive, blocking Ukraine's efforts to evacuate 200,000 people from the besieged city of Mariupol. Moscow calls the invasion a special military operation. Two of the big four accounting firms also said Sunday they would cut their Russia ties. KPMG and PricewaterhouseCoopers said they would no longer have a member firm in Russia over the invasion. KPMG said its Russia and Belarus firms will leave their network, while PwC separately agreed that its Russian firm will exit theirs. Together, the two companies said the decisions will affect more than 8,000 partners and staff. And American Express also said it was suspending operations in Russia and Belarus, similar to Visa and MasterCard. All now joined the growing list of Western companies who have closed shop in Russia, including Nike, IKEA and French luxury brand Hermes. Meanwhile, the popular Chinese-owned video app TikTok said Sunday it would be limiting its services in Russia in light of a new media law there. Putin on Friday signed a law that threatens jail terms up to 15 years for spreading what the Kremlin describes as fake news. The law makes it illegal to report any event that could discredit the Russian military. TikTok said it would suspend live streaming and new content uploads in Russia while they review the safety implications of the law. Welcome back to World News Tonight. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. NASA has confirmed that underwater volcanic eruption near Tonga spewed an ash plume into the atmosphere that hit a record 58 kilometers. Using satellite data, the ash cloud was estimated to be around 23 kilometers higher than the previous world record set by a volcano in the Philippines. South Korean authorities are going all out to prevent wildfires in eastern coastal regions spreading further. At least 95 firefighting helicopters and some 17,000 personnel have been deployed to tackle the blazes. Indian shares tumbled and the rupee hit record lows as a spike in oil prices on fears of a ban on Russian oil imports stoked worries about high inflation and bigger current account deficits 
for the world's third largest importer of crude. The chief of South Korea's ruling party was admitted to hospital after being hit on the head by a stranger while campaigning for this week's presidential election, in which early voting has been marred by some lapses. New Zealand's government said it will introduce legislation to allow it to impose sanctions against Russia following its invasion of Ukraine. When passed, it will be the first time New Zealand would have levied sanctions individually on a country. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you have missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight with Disneyland celebrations of their 30th anniversary in Paris. Thank you for watching. Good night.